should have been doing this from the beginning. What is going on, man? Why why did it take us so long to figure this out? Um, I don't I don't know, but at least now we can record these snippets. Yes, uh, snippets. <laughs> hey, so why didn't you why so cousin Tenny, who's running an Alaskan fish export company now, big and rich and fat. He needed somebody to help him get up to speed on some kind of fucking... He doesn't know how to use technology because he, I don't know, was raised with a tire, swinging on a tire. Why Why didn't you take him up on it, dude? Could have been some good money. Yeah, it just wasn't... It, it, everything wasn't right. It just wasn't right. It, all the time was fucked. I mean, it, the money, I, I'm trying not to make decisions based on money. Like, I have a lot of work I need to do. Like, I still have to make the bags, and I still, and I'm making a new brand for the popping patches, which I'm back ordered, and I got to get a lot of shit out. And I mean, to commit for, he wanted like a month, and I can't commit to being away from my business and the and the bag business for a month for a couple grand. I can't, I, I, I can't let money like that take me away from what I'm doing. But I thought, so I, did, I thought, I was offered a hundred, I was offered a hundred thousand dollars to go work for another bag company. I can't do it. It's not about the money. I'm I thought you said fuck those business. people. Dude, I'm telling you right now, there could have never been any better decision than you working with Tenny. You probably would have increased your testosterone level by 50% like overnight. Yeah, but then I really had to think about like working with Tenny. What? <laughs> I don't know, man. What's wrong with that? I don't know. I mean, he's, he's, he's really, he's a fast talker, which I don't like fast talkers, first of all. I don't like fast talkers. <laughs> I was, it always, they're always trying to get, it, seriously, a fast talker is always trying to get around something. I don't need to be around people who are trying to get around shit. I want people who are fucking straight up on it, fucking evaluating their situations. I mean, and I didn't know the situation. I mean, he, went, he I was like, well, what is it? He's like, well, it's my social media. And I'm like, well, that's like a whole fucking thing, dude. That's, an, that's like a lifetime yeah, but process. Gonna pay, he was going to pay you. And he has some big money. And he's also dealing with Bill Schaff, the, the tallest Chippewa in the world, and you would have been hooked up with some Indian <laughs> shit. Yeah. Well. yeah I, you I, know what I think it is? I think you're scared. You yeah, I mean, look, you got to realize, dude, I'm, I'm committing to my new brand. I'm committing to continuing working with my fucking existing brand. And I'm and I'm com and I'm committing to working with fucking you. I mean, my goal is to actually do what I told you: come down on Wednesdays, stay at Jan's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and fucking be with you for three days a week. Try to try this. <laughs> that doesn't. Th right. He is not part. Of, he is not part of my vision, bro. He's he's never been a part of my vision. It was like, dude, he would just break everything. He would break everything. <laughs> We're trying to get something like big or, going here, and then I go see Tenny, and then, you know, and then obviously whatever you know, whatever happens is going to happen. But if it, I lose, you know, the opportunity I've been trying to do for over twenty years, and it's now starting to slowly come together, just to leave and go fucking fuck with Tenny for some money. That's not. It's not it, bro. It's not it. I'm trying not that's to. That's not money, it. You know. Yeah, but dude. We're now, now listen, now business. listen, now, 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 now listen to this. Now listen. Now, if you, now listen, yeah. if you had come to me and said, dude, you've got to go film fucking Tenny. You've got to go down there and catch all this video. And it's super important. Yes. Then I'd be like, yeah, let's yes. do that. It didn't come. It didn't come that road, bro. It didn't come from that road. It came from I can't Sean. think of everything. I know. I know. But Sean, I can't, I can't think of everything. I right. can't. Came from listen, listen. Listen, <laughs> I can't think of it. You know that that's a video bonanza. I know. But 
that's not what he wanted, bro. And that wouldn't be just sitting around filming shit. It doesn't. Like and 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 also, dude. Yeah, was we'll like, see. And, and I was nerd, and I was nerd now because Sean guided him to me, saying I had nothing to do, and that was that, that really kind of ir- irked me a little bit because I was like, dude, I have more shit to do than fucking <laughs> God. I don't. Hey, go to Matt. He's got nothing to do right now. What do you mean, bro? I, I run two fucking businesses. <laughs> fucking. What do you mean, bro? The fuck, bro? Hey, hey. Fucking Manny King, King Salmon. Huh. Go visit him. Hey. <laughs> why did he, why hey? Why did he think you had? He's like, yeah, go talk to me. Got nothing to do. What How did you fuck? find that out? He fucking told me. He's like, yeah, Sean fucking couldn't do it. So he told me, go to Matty King. He's got nothing going on. <laughs> the fuck? So I even yeah, had that's Sean, a I'm like, I had Sean up the other day and I was like, and I'm like, I even said, well, what do you mean? Like it kind of the, the conversation moved. But I was like, what do you mean? Like, why'd you guide him into me saying I have nothing to do? I'm like, I'm like busier than I've ever fucking been right now. Just because I don't have a car and I'm not mobile he... and I can't get around. What did he say? Well, it it, it moved. It, the, it was the three of us in the same room and it just kind of went in and out. Like literally that conversation, I couldn't even have it with him. Like, I mean, if you want to get it, catch it on. Yeah, you got to tell him. You're like, bro. I know. He's like, bro, what was, what's up with the low-key diss? What's up with the low-key diss, Sean? What do you mean? Why'd you tell Tanny I had nothing to do? That's, a, that's what he led off with. He led off with, Cousin Matt! Hey, I just got on your buddy, Sean. Oh, he said you didn't got anything to do. I got something to do for you. He said you was floundering with no direction or something. Something like that. Said your pockets were out turned like this and you had nothing going on. No woman, no life, nothing. He said you needed a lifeline. I don't know what he meant, but listen, I can probably work you in on some kind of social media thing. Come on. I need a social Take media, Take it to the guys. Philippines and get you... <laughs> Take you to the Philippines and get your knob wet. Let's go. <laughs> I'll feed you. We'll eat real. It won't be work all the time. There'll be there'll be a lot of free time. We'll eat. We'll eat a lot. I'm like, oh, it's like <laughs> my, head just, my head is just spinning, bro. I mean, I'm I'm like irked that Sean's like saying I got nothing to do with my fucking shit right now, and I'm free to fucking just go wander the planet with Tenny starting his new fucking business and social media out in Texas. <laughs> And then Danny's like, oh, I, yeah, dude, it's going to be great, you know. And then, you know, I'll, you know, you, you can probably hit me up for whatever you want, and then I'll even give you a little extra, you know. And I'm like, and, 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 and now I'm taking, like, dude, the universe is, like, just trying to fucking catch me on a fucking hook that's just, like, way bad, dude. Like, not a direction I need to be going in my life right now, doing fucking shit, hanging out with Tenny that, oh, I, I, I'm sober, but I still drink a little bit. Like, fuck, dude. That's all I need to do is catch Tenny on a bender out in Texas. Like, what if he catches one? <laughs> fuck, dude. Great. I'm stuck with Tenny in a bar in a bender somewhere. Middle of Texas. That's all I need. King Salmon. <laughs> the Indian. The light-skinned Indian. Oh, light-skinned Indian trapped in fucking Texas with the <laughs> white man. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, white warrior. You go up there with the fat fish man. You take him out of that bar. Get him rescued. Get him on the hook. Hey. hey he's selling he's Alaskan, he's selling Alaskan salmon in Texas. Oh. Oh, he's the real. He's the Alaskan salmon with legs. That one. He's the real one. He's the real one. He, he swam his fishy little ass down to Texas. Oh. <laughs> Stay away from the fire water. This hey. is the biggest test, salmon warrior. Biggest call, test. Call my, hey, he calls the king salmon <coughs> because he thinks that the salmon and his business are the same. I'll know all about the salmon. Cause Matt, he get you up here, you little fuckwad, and get you down here in Austin, Texas. We get you some real fucking. We'll just be slathering ribs and eating cornbread and just going to fucking town. I'm pretty much sober except for the cocaine and the alcohol. Don't worry about it. All I need to do is tie a rope around my midsection at 11 p.m. every night. 
And then at four, you just start pulling on that thing. I'll get you a wedge. You can help it out because I'm a little heavier than I used to be. But look at go. <laughs> but that didn't seem like a good plan for the future. <laughs> Woo! Man, I thought about it. I really, it didn't take me long either. I really, really, the second I understood the concept, I was like, nope, I'm good. Let me help you out, bro. Let me guide you somewhere else. All right. Man. <laughs> All right, hold on. Now, let's see if I can share this with you. This is another test. This is another test. Screw. Oh, wait a second. Mm, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, can you see that? I can see something. It says oh 60 God, minutes it's... rewind. Oh, you are fucking out of your mind. You, I can see the shit out of that. I mean, it's a little small, but I mean. Huh? Can you I mean, hear yeah. this? Oh, I can hear the shit out of it. Show business usually applies to... Can you hear? Okay, look. October 28, 1984. Now listen to this. 60 Minutes goes and does an interview with Jackie Gleason. Okay? Yeah. You remember who Jackie Gleason is? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Uh... Uh, pow right in the kisser, right? He's like the pow right in the kisser with his woman one of these days. Yeah, pow yeah. Right the Ralph Cramden, right? Yeah. He was the dad. He was the dad in Richard Pryor's The Toy. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the hell died, died in like 1987 or some shit. He was in Smokey and the Bandit as the sheriff. Remember? Now watch this interview, dude. It's the best interview I've ever seen because... Okay, so so he goes and he's like, all right, we're going to talk to the... And I guess his name was the great one? Jackie Gleason was known as the great one? Which I didn't know that. I just want you to, like, watch the... Who he is himself. We decided to find out just who the great one is. Sure you haven't got any money. Uh, no, no. Oh, it's against company. We'll play for fun. <laughs> I mean, look, this is on national television. It's an old fat man with a cigarette. Like, when was the last time you saw a guy smoking in an interview on t national television? They got the whole thing going. Look at this collar, bro. That fucking collar is, is fucking huge. And this is at his hot... Oh, it's at his house? Yep, it's at his house. This is how this guy's living. Just watch. You sure? This is where Tenny, Cousin Tenny's heading this way, right here. What you see right here, it's going to be Cousin Tenny in a second. Here we go. Of a 68-year-old hustler and some memories. Herbert John Gleason, whose appetite for excess made him larger than life in every way. Who pranced and partied from Brooklyn to Broadway who rolled over the networks and the film studios to get what he wanted, who can't read, write, or play a note of music, but who sold millions of records of his made-up melodies, who performed feats of pure fancy as light-fingered as a jewel thief. Jackie Gleason is a natural, never studied or rehearsed, planned or practiced. He's winged it all his life. Fifty years ago, a teenage wife okay. got... You see how they open that up? They just pan across a ton of liquor bottles, and then they hit his chubby cheeks, taking a drag. Yeah. I was barely an act, and away he went. I went to a place called Tiny Chateau. Then I had this stale act of impersonations and a couple of real bad jokes. And I went on and did the first show, and they were all miners and boots and real tough crowd. Well, they almost booed me off. And Tiny, who was naturally seven foot tall, when I came off, he said, give me it. <laughs> and he took me over to the phone, and he dropped quarters in to call in the yard. And everybody at the bar turned around and watched. And he got Sally Shore on the phone. He says, how can you send me a bum <laughs> like this? this and he went, in front of the audience? Yeah, in front of the people at the bar. And when Tiny hung up, he looked at me. And I guess I had that poor soul look up. And he felt, say, he said, come on, I'll buy you a drink. So we had one, two, three, maybe 15 <laughs> drinks. And it's time for the second show. I went out and I killed people. 
I did somersaults, told jokes I never heard, played the piano, which I can't play. And when I came off, Donnie said, well, why didn't you do that in a verse show? I said, well, you know, I'm just breaking in. So the next night, when I came downstairs, I tried to remember what I had done. And I knew the only way to remember was go to the bar and have about 15 drinks and it would come to me. What do you think of that so far? What is your reaction to this, what we're watching? Because I feel like right now, the style and the essence of this whole scene right here is you're downstairs at Jan's house. Pool table, dude, like... a bar. Yeah, dude. That's uh, And then like his story. It's like, yeah, that's. It's the uh, it's the carefree, right? You have 15 drinks and go out and just don't give a fuck. <clears throat> Anything you do is is great because nothing matters. Right. Alcohol gave, gave him the freedom and now... to just not give a fuck. <laughs> In those days, of course, no television. Uh... And the next best thing, I guess, was Hollywood. I got 250 a week at Warner Brothers, and they put me in gangster pictures. So then I came back to New York when a guy from Dumont saw me, and uh, they wanted to replace the comedian on the Dumont network that was doing Cavalcade of Stars. Two weeks at $600 was the contract. I you went think up. Did you no future for television? No, it, as far as I was concerned, it was just a, just a job. At that time, I, I didn't think I had anything but television. <laughs> when I was about nine years old, eight years old, and she had to work, so she couldn't take care of the home or the house or the flat uh, very well and work at the same time. But she was a good mother, and uh, everything was very pleasant, even though it was desultory you mean not a lot of well it was affection a, oh there was a lot of affection but the place was dull the bulbs weren't very bright and uh, the surroundings of course were very bare any of the, the stage business with that couple that you drew from oh there were what? many there were many uh, Cramden in Brooklyn. Uh, almost everybody was a crammed in, in this particular neighborhood that I lived in. And, Pretty lousy husband. <laughs> well, no, not really, Morley. When you think of him, the poor soul uh, hasn't got a hell of a lot of ability, but he keeps trying. He gets schemes, and the schemes are all to make he and Alice happy, and uh, he fails. And when he fails, she feels a great deal of affection. She knows why he did it. And he apologizes all the time. Of course, with all the bluff, he's... He's just an ordinary moax that's trying to make it and just can't do it. That's all. Why is this... Dude, I gotta... I'm like, I need to, like, capture all of his language. Moax. Just an ordinary yeah. moax, that's all. Yeah, he's trying to say mook, but he doesn't. He's like, moak. Just an ordinary moax. Yeah, but then, what are you making of this, bro? I mean, where no one gives interviews like this anymore. He's tired. He's, he's, he's accomplished everything you can accomplish in life. He's sitting at a bar with fucking Morley Safer or whatever the fuck this Nimrod's <laughs> name is. He's got a giant red shirt on. He's smoking a cigarette. It was just bad. Not really when you think of it, Morty. Not really. Ah, lights were, He's trying. Lights were dim. That's... Real dim. Real dim. <laughs> everybody was everybody was a Cranston out there. Was... Yeah, you know. But... It was just a guy trying to get by, trying to get I mean, how good is this? It's fucking awesome. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> It schemes. is. It's awesome. He, he fails and he apologizes. You know, Alice loves you know, him because he, dude, she knows. This can, I mean, this can be recreated, bro. 
This isn't like a once in a lifetime what? operation. This can be recreated. This whole thing you're watching right now can be Show recreated. Show successful. Now, I know. Practically, in reruns, as it was the first time around. There are there only thirty nine. I could give you uh, twenty academic answers. To that. No, no, no. But give the me one is, is it's funny. The golf swing. First, step up. Plant your feet firmly on the ground and address the See, ball. See, like, in some weird way when I was watching this, I was like, you know, that's me and Salmon right there. That's me and Salmon. <laughs> I'm the Jackie Gleason. <laughs> I'm the Jackie Gleason guy, and you're the Norton guy. Right? It is. Yes, that's exactly what it is, dude. Right, like this is me and you, right? I'm wearing a sweater, I'm a little chubby, right? You're thinner, but you're a little goofy. And we're sitting there trying to figure some shit out together. You see that? You see that? <laughs> dude, Hello? Hey, don't, 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 think, don't think it's not the first time I've seen that one, dude. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> All right, now, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so here we are, right? Chubb stirring salmon, trying to figure out how to play golf. And begin. How much of the success was due to Norton? What do they mean by address the ball? I say 90%. I'll give him 90%. He's just great. He was wonderful. Step up. Plant your feet firmly. <laughs> Hello, boy. <laughs> Out of the blue, Jackie Gleason's son. Yeah. Right? Hello, bro. Am I wrong? It's totally it, dude. It's exactly And then it. I get mad? That's <laughs> not that. Why you know it? Right. God, it's the best fucking comedy ever, bro. There's no better comedy, dude. Yeah. Didn't want to do the show in New York. We wanted to do it in Miami. When we're doing the honeymooners, I had a big contract for that for two years. And after the first year, I said I didn't want to do it. And they didn't believe me. They thought I had a job somewhere else. And finally, they realized that I just didn't want to do it. And uh, when they approached me to do another show, I was in California making a picture. And I said, all right. I said, but I want a train that goes to Florida. Because I'd come down here and played golf and liked it. And I figured... Might as well go to Florida and do the show, play golf all the time. And they went for it. What was on that train? Everything. We had two Dixieland vans coming from California. What? And they would spell each other. I'd say to them, take five miles. <laughs> and, uh, and the parties went on 24. I found out that what? I couldn't attend the parties. Were, they, were there girls on that train? <laughs> were there girls? <laughs> what the fuck? He dude? said, Are you fucking telling me this guy said, I want a train to go to Florida? And they turn it into a party train? Yeah. Yeah. Jackie Gleason, the great one. This might be why they call him the great one. Invented the party train. Everybody's like party bus now. The frat guy party bus ain't shit compared to an entire locomotive full of midgets, drinks, and girls. And dude, a train to go to Florida from California... That's like a long party, bro. No, no, New York. New York. New York to Florida on a train. Yeah, it would, they would ride this train and they just get shit faced. For like three days. Every day. <sighs> yeah. Oh, you saw the picture. He goes, yeah. yeah we, we, and I told him, all right, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to do this show anymore, I want a train. It's going to be stocked with. <laughs> Whiskey and rye, and I want midgets on, and topless ladies, and lots of cigars and charcuterie. Jesus, <laughs> that's partying, bro. That's partying. That's legit, That's real. Bro. That's a man party. God damn! I thought I thought that's, that's the kind of partying good. where probably no. Pff. That was a health cruise. This right here, 
getting on the party train with Jackie Gleason, the great one. Guaranteed every night someone vomited and shit their pants. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like shit their pants debauchery. and vomited every night. Like that's where debauchery came from was that fucking party train. All right, listen to this. They certainly were. <laughs> and and they were very, very nice girls. Nothing untoward happened. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it didn't. <laughs> Might have, that, been bird, might have been uh, because the birds were too small. <laughs> I mean, look at that picture, bro. Every day. There's like a guy playing a trombone, a chick. There's a, a drum set over here. <laughs> Dude, I wish that he had done like how the train was made. Like, I wish he had done that. Like, like you know, he made that, right? Like, he, he went in and said, okay, we're going to clear six you need to make of a chairs out. <laughs> you know, come on, chairs out. Dude, you can't on see the it. Right and, you know. <laughs> you can't see it here, but back there they were playing cornhole right over here. Dude, we need a cornhole train. Just clear all the fucking. <laughs> Nothing happened on that trip. And was there a bar on that train? Yeah, right. Amtrak cornhole. Did you hear that? The train was a bar. <laughs> what? Dude, I thought he was about to choke. Was there like, a bar on the train? You saw his face? <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to run it again. Here we go. Here, I'm running again. Happened down that train. And was there a bar on that train? <laughs> a bar on the train was a bar. <laughs> I guess that's a classic example of what clout is. Yes. Say, a train, please. That's right. When you've got good ratings, and you're one, two, or three in the ratings, and there is nothing your little heart desires that they don't provide. Doesn't work that way anymore, Mr. Blazon. Uh, <laughs> did you have a comedy show? You were making extraordinary money, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 million dollars, uh, when 15 million dollars was real money. Uh, were those tough negotiations with CBS, getting that kind of money out of Mr. Paley? Well, the first one we had was for $11 million. And I had a terrible hangover. And I was at the table with all the agents, and we had lunch at uh, Paley's room. And uh, I fell asleep. <laughs> and Paley said, well, if that's his attitude, give it to him. So... Uh, a hangover you, you, work. Yeah, you even hustled. Uh, you even hustled the negotiations. Well, I didn't realize I was doing. <laughs> but you've always lived, I'm told, uh, way over your head, even when you were work, earning a really big money. Well, I that, think everybody should make two fortunes: one to blow, to really live it up with, and then the other for security. But when you were spending, dude, you know, did you hear that? Oh, you bastard! I missed it for a moment. <coughs> I missed, like, I, like, I'm now having fun. Did you hear that? No, I missed all of it, dude. Listen to these words of hold wisdom. On, hold on, right hold here. on. Because I missed it from like. Because he's talking when to you're him. One, two, when, you, when you're one, two, and three. Yeah, well, he he had a hangover during the thing and fell asleep. But listen to this. Listen to this. Just listen to this. First of all, relax your mind, right? Try to find that third eye and allow your true inner energy to be ready to receive this wisdom. Are you there? I'm there. Are you there? I am there. Okay, great spirit. All right, here we go. Shh. Let your placid like a lake. Placid like a lake. Well, we're earning a really big money. Is I that, think everybody that, uh, should make two fortunes. One to blow, to really live it up with, and then the other for security. But... Have you received that wisdom, King Salmon? <laughs> I have received that wisdom. What does your soul, what is your, what does your wisdom say to that? I need the second, I need, I need the second one. 
I need both of them. I don't know. I need both of them. Did you see his face? Did you see his face? Everybody should have two fortunes. One so you can really blow it, really live it up. Money. I that, think everybody that, should make two fortunes. One to blow. To I really honestly, live it dude, up I was like, when I saw that, I was like, man, this guy is a genius. I mean, I need to know more about Jackie Gleason and what he did in his life. Because he, clearly, whatever we know is like the tip of the iceberg. He's he's probably had some sort of crazy Roman drunken debauchery, just insane parties. I mean, we're we're catching him fucking. And then the other for security. Like what? We're catching him in like how old do you think he was when he first kind of started going in his thirties, maybe? I don't know, bro, but he said that when he was at uh, at Tiny's Cabaret or whatever the hell it was called, he was 15. All right, so he's been just running fucking debauchery right. since he... I mean, he's been, he's been versed in the art of fucking how to do this shit. Oh, they should have probably taken his brain out and done testing on it from how much alcohol it had soaked up. All right, I mean, this guy just, I mean... You know, and he's talking like, oh, two fortunes, you know, and it's like, this guy's like had two fortunes for like 40 years. <laughs> he's had two fortunes for like Imagine. 40 years. Never went to school. Yeah, two fortunes, never went to school. Never took acting lessons. Think about that. Was a pool hustler. <laughs> Think about that, dude. He was like the original Minnesota Fats or something. Wow. He took smoking and drinking and turned it into two fortunes. Really think about that. I mean, what the fuck is the equivalent to that today? I mean, there, there isn't. isn't. There isn't. I'm trying to. I'm trying to say this. When was the last time you saw a guy finish a cigarette during a, a, a news interview? Sixty minutes. Not. He finishes it, then he lights up the other one as he's talking. He's chain smoking in an interview. When was the? When did we become a country where you couldn't see a chain smoker on television? When did that happen? When they took smoking off of television in the 80s. It's so crazy. They took smoking off TV. But when you were spending, I mean, it was excessive. The, the Rolls Royces and the trains and the handouts and uh, almost. You, you well, know, I should have had more respect for money. Because I, I, I never had any. And I don't know why. And I also had no fear when I should have had fear. For instance, the way they used to uh, get you in television, they would get you to paint yourself into a corner of luxury. Then they would start to dictate. Because they knew that you feared losing that money. And... Uh, so you'd give up your independence and go along with them. It was, uh, it was threats to your security and kudos uh, to your ego. That's how they operate. Do you hear that? But I... That hasn't changed. But I mean, this, is, this guy right here is a hustler and he's laying it clear as day. Clear as day, straight down the and middle. It was only two topics. It was right. only two fucking things. That's it. Dude, they That's replay right. that. We That's replay it. that for those fuckers out there to really get what the fuck. There's only two topics. This is a guy who's been through it all, yeah. my man. Think oh, about that. Too. He's been through it all. He's fucked and drank and smoked through it all.
it was uh, it was threats to your security and kudos uh, That's to it. your ego. That's how they operate. But I learned that on the corner. Of <laughs> he, and then he goes, but I learned that on the corner of Chauncey Street in Brooklyn. From when I was a little kid. And I knew when they were telling me how great I was that they had something coming up next that they wanted or wanted me to do. You once had a television show that probably that, uh, was about the worst show ever on television. Oh, you're in the picture. A beauty. We roll out some pictures. The panelists put their heads into holes that have been cut into the pictures. Now, they can't see what the picture is because we have a little collar under their chin. They try to guess what the content of the picture is or what they portray in the picture. What possessed you to do Well, all I can tell you that there were perhaps 30 executives in CBS who thought it was <laughs> the funniest thing they'd ever seen in their life. I began to think it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And then we did it and crash. And I went to CBS and I said, uh, I've got to go on next week and apologize to the audience. I can't. They said, what are you talking about? This is a network. You can't do that. Last week, we did a show called You're in the Picture. <laughs> that played. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> the biggest bomb. And the, and the critics uh, hailed them for it. He said, gee, at last the network is apologizing for a bomb. How does that happen? How is this a dumb idea? Because there are executives who have a great talent. And that talent is to say yes, that sounds like no, or no, that sounds like yes. So uh, they continue in their job because they have this great talent. I might have been drinking <laughs> so much, but uh, I went along with it. Were you drinking a lot in those days? Not on show day. Man. That show day must have been a real that show day must have been a real hummer because like he would have been friggin' like dying to get back to that bottle after the show. <laughs> <coughs> Well, you knew he wasn't going to try to take too many takes. He was going to get it right on the first go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Fuck, oh, man. God bless this man. I mean, he's really laying it out there. Because I don't like to be chipped. Perhaps it was art imitating life, but Gleason proved he could act. As Joe the Lush in Saroyan's The Time of Your Life for Playhouse 90. Now I don't do anything. I live all the time. As Mace, the grubby fight manager in the film Requiem for a Heavyweight. And as Minnesota yeah. Fats in The Hustler. You were, at your height, I guess, the most successful man on television. Dude, Maybe look at that body. Now. What's going on there? I mean, that's some hard, that's some hard. <laughs> so he's got, first of all, I, he, I guess he, he doesn't have a belt on. What was that? That was my notification. He doesn't have a belt on. Uh, he doesn't have a belt on. And then like his lower half is just kind of like this like, like a, egg like shape. Like a barrel. It's like he's in a fucking like a wine barrel. <laughs> like a wine barrel cut out. He's got like a wine barrel got these... legs cut out. Why do so many guys have a fat midsection but their legs decide to stay skinny? You'd think that their legs would be like big and buff to carry all that shit around. <laughs> That's what you'd think. And then you kind of like look at this and you're like, you kind of feel sorry for his junk because you're just like, man, I guess that's just smothered down there. It's just smothered away in a smooth bubble. <laughs> oh, he's got the special stick, right? He's got the special <laughs> stick for the shower. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I guess, you know, this is the kind of guy you see in a steam bath. You know what I mean? Like 
when you go into the sauna at the gym, he's this is the guy that's naked. It doesn't matter. It's all covered up. And he's just sitting there. He does he doesn't care, you know. It's part of being a man back then was just looking like shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were just like, whatever, we're all men. We got a fucking disgusting dong and a fat stomach on our thighs. We don't give a fuck. Who gives a shit? <laughs> man, right. This is so this is like this is like the cameraman. Think about this from your cameraman perspective. You're the cameraman and you're framing this shot, oh, right? And this is in his house. Why does he have so many swizzle sticks on the bar in his house? Is he, it's like he has a tavern every night just open up just for him. <laughs> one swizzle stick, throw it to the side. Next swizzle stick, we'll just throw it. <laughs> one per drink, bro. He doesn't want to use it twice. <laughs> the cameraman was like, you know what? We're going to back out so we can see his fat, ugly penis area. We're just going to back out so, so we can really get a good glimpse at the egg. You know. What is in, that? In, and then, in like, the see? bar downstairs at my house. So before I was adopted in there, they had that party room downstairs, and they had a like a makeshift bar. But dude, in that motherfucking bar, right? They had a cup full of like fifty swizzle sticks, different from all over. Like they would, they would fucking pick up swizzle sticks from all over Hawaii and every bar around town. You know, right. Like, so this is what I was trying to get at. Like, there was a time when nobody thought it, like, it was cool at your house if you had built a bar downstairs with swizzle sticks with a whole bunch of fucking things. So you could have a party on Wednesday, Thursday, didn't fucking matter. Yeah, right. I mean, that, you don't see that anymore. That's not really. No, you don't. This is wild, bro. All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to roll this again. I just, I had to look at this body. I'm just, God damn, bro. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. He's like nipping out right here. And the nips are pointing down. It's like a poor shirt. Uh, that poor shirt. He's got a body like an orangutan. Poor yeah, it's like a, an orangutan. He looks like an, like orangutan. an orangutan. He's got like an orangutan yes, body. He's an orangutan. Yeah. God bless him, though. He's as honest as the day is long right here, bro. I love it. it. All right, here we go. Past that. You may still have been be the most successful guy ever been on television. And yet there've been no awards from television. No, uh, I I won the Tony on Broadway. Uh, nominated. For I was Academy nominated Awards. for an Oscar. I was nominated for an Emmy once, but that's as far. It's strange that the the business that I devoted most of uh, my endeavor to, that there shouldn't be some award. Uh, now Audrey, I believe, got uh, got an Emmy. Art did. Uh, June Taylor did when we were doing the variety show. Everybody got an Emmy uh, but me. The story will continue uh. after this. The king of his castle. In the other room, the game room, we have a crap table from Vegas. He and his third wife, Marilyn, are rebuilding their Florida palace, almost destroyed by fire last year. <laughs> what they don't tell you is it was almost destroyed by fire because he passed out with a cigarette in his hand, caught on the shag carpet, and almost torched the entire no. place. Yeah, no, I just made that up. But I'm sure that's what happened. <laughs> right, that's All right, here exactly we go. What <laughs> Puts it a prolonged vacation. A movie every few years, usually playing Smokey to Burt Reynolds' Bandit. Not even a heart attack six years ago has curbed his desire for La Dolce Vita. Or his habit of smoking. Damn! Five packs a day, dog. I can't even understand how you do that. Well, I mean, you gotta smoke while you're sleeping. Or you just, like, smoke half of it and throw it away. This is... The... No, this is before... Pap machines or whatever those are. So he probably had sleep apnea and he was smoking five packs a day with sleep yeah. apnea. Think yeah. about that. How the fuck? They made him tougher back then. They just made him tougher. <laughs> five packs a day. Dude, that's a new shirt. Five packs a day, tough bitch. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's doing 60 in a golf cart with his old lady next to him, and he's smoking right into the wind, dude. Ashes are going into her eyes. <laughs> Insane. Fuck, dude. 
He has painted himself into that corner of luxury and has managed to stay there, despite a lifelong belief that having fun is better than having money. If I were broke tomorrow, it would hurt for a while. But uh, I'd go back to living like I used to live. You like that one, pal? Tell me something. The great one, where did that come from? Well, Orson Welles called me the great one first. And then Lucy started to call me that. And uh, I'm really not offended by it. Did you ever really believe it? You just saw me play pool, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, dude, from they just fucking died. Orson Welles called him the fucking Orson Welles, dude. <laughs> Holy Orson Welles and Lucille oh, Ball. Dude, like, you couldn't get more respect than those two. Fuck. The great one. Dude, so after I saw this, right, I was like, fuck, I got to get Matt to see this. Then I was like, what I need to do now is I need to read a real in-depth biography on Jackie Gleason. Dude, fucking guide me in the direction of the book that you find is the best one. I want to read it too, man. That... That's something else because I want to hear like his beginning before he got in the movies. Right. How did he get good at pool? How did he get good at this? What was he doing? Was he a flim flam man? What was he doing? Three card Monty on the back the of some fun, beached whale over there. In the Miami? funny thing is like you can't replicate that shit. It's so old. And so no, intense. You no. Can't replicate it. He came along, he came along when there was only a couple of channels. So you had to watch him and he was going to do his thing. Bro. I want to know who found him first. I don't know, but I got to get the biography. All right, I'll hit yeah. you up later. <laughs> what? Really? I thought you were working. Why? Why? Because it's <laughs> oh working <my> God. <laughs> I know, I kept in the way. Oh, we do. Oh, <laughs> shit to do. This is a long